Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, and uh, I want to welcome you to this Faith in Our Hometown on this Super Bowl Sunday today. Don't know who you're rooting for, but I hope your team wins. I hope my team wins. Well, this morning uh, I have as a guest today Ivy Hagedorn, who is the marketing director at Joplin Empire Market. And we're going to talk a little bit about what the market does. We're also going to talk about a new program that they have for children and feeding children. And there's some also pro new programs going on about art supplies for kids and, and a new little library that they have. So there are a lot of incredible things going on going on down there and I can't wait to hear more from Ivy and what's going on at Empire Market and uh, I can't wait to share the rest of this show with you. So stay tuned and uh, go get yourself a cup of coffee and be ready because we're going to be taking it off here in just about uh, 30 seconds. Uh, we'll be right back in Faith in Our Hometown. It was silly to be so um, uh, dreading it so much because uh, it was really no big deal. There was no pain afterwards. Um, I was really, really hungry, so I got to have whatever I wanted to have for, for lunch. Um, but, you know, the rest of the day I just slept and, and there was no pain and went to work the next day. Every day that I opened up my refrigerator and saw that, refer that referral on my refrigerator, I just dreaded having to go through it. And, and now I just kind of laugh about it because it just, it was no big deal. And knowing it's behind me, I just don't have to worry about it. Well, my husband and I, we do a lot of riding and we kind of cram everything into the weekends, but uh, eventually, um, you know, we, we'd like to, once we retire, we want to be able to go um, uh, on vacations on our bikes and, and, and go, go riding on weekends a lot more, so we have a lot to look forward to. Welcome back to this Sunday morning in Faith in Our Hometown. I'm here with uh, Ivy Hagedorn, and we're going to talk a little bit about Joplin Empire Market and some of the things that are going on there and some of the new things that are happening. So, Ivy, welcome. Thank so glad you. that you're here today. So, well, first of all, me. tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get connected to Empire Market? Yeah, so um, I grew up in Joplin, you know, around here, graduated from Joplin High School, Missouri Southern. All right, all right. Uh, and then I, I moved out of the state for a number of years and came back and um, downtown Joplin was quite a bit different than it had been when I had left. Like there was just what a year lot did you more. Leave? I left in 2004. Okay. And, came and back. I came back in 2012. So yeah, that was a and big change. Yeah, it really was. And there was just so much more happening. Uh, and you know, Third Thursday mm -hmm. and a lot of new businesses downtown. And I was like, well, this is really cool. Like this is something I would you know, like to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of got involved as a volunteer, just started helping out at events and, and such. And then um, eventually I actually joined the board of Downtown Joplin Alliance. Yeah. And uh, then we were, um, we had the distinction, I suppose, of having this entire, like three city blocks worth of property donated to us as an organization. Mm -hmm. We're a nonprofit uh, by Liberty Utilities. And it's down on 4th Street, East 4th Street. Now, at the time, and it was Empire District, right? Right. Which is how it, it they had got were literally just changing, okay. like at the end of that year. So um, this had been, it's a historic brick building built in 1907. And for over a hundred years, it was where Empire District Electric, you know, had one of their warehouses. They had offices there. There was a meter shop on the yeah. property, um, but just a really cool place. And you know, they'd so moved big, out. Big wide open space, or big, was it broken um, up? A lot of it was big and wide open. And there were there's truck bays, there's outside space. Mm -hmm. um, there were offices upstairs. You know, that were maybe you know a. a a little bit dated, but still okay. And we walked through that, I remembered, and we were all just kind of like, oh my gosh, this should be a city market. Mm -hmm. well, so was that where the idea came from? Or we had, had downtown Joplin had already talked about a market? We had wanted to be doing some sort of like indoor style market. Mm -hmm. A lot of us had you know, traveled around, we'd been to the, the city market and Kansas City, you know, mm -hmm. Pike Place Market in Seattle, um, Grand Central in LA, um, some of the markets in New York. 
And we just really thought like, okay, we have a lot of regional farmers markets. Right. You know, Web City has yeah. an excellent one. They've had it for over 20 years. Neosho has a good one, Pittsburgh. But Joplin has not really been able to make a go of that kind of market. H had there been a try before? Mm -hmm. there, there had been, uh, there'd been one recently, like ones that I'd attended just as a guest at uh, the parking lot of Memorial Hall, uh -huh. which you can imagine how hot that was yeah. in the summertime, just asphalt everywhere, yeah. people in tents. Yeah. And then- if the food wasn't cooked, it would be, so. <laughs> it would have been. The morning tomatoes. Yeah, the tomatoes the were pretty much marinara yeah, by the time you, go. you got them. I was gonna say that, <laughs> come on. Took your line. Uh -huh. But, uh, <laughs> and then it had moved uh, for a brief time to Ewart Park. Uh -huh. uh, and then there was actually a private market uh, that had been down on Range Line in a parking lot for a while but there's just nothing had really gelled. Mm -hmm. And the city knew that we'd been looking for a facility that like, oh, maybe we can transform this. And so when Empire was looking to kind of divest themselves of this property, the city put them in touch mm -hmm. with us and we looked it over and we're like, yeah, yes, we will take this. And so we went from a nonprofit organization that had, that owned nothing. Mm -hmm. Like we were literally Downtown at that Job time. Alliance, yes, we about, were yeah. at that time operating out of a borrowed, like storefront office yeah. um, to having this property that, you know, we, <laughs> we just had all of this property now. And, and it was, um, it definitely was a huge learning curve for all of us. What kind of condition was it in when you got it? And you know, what it did you have to do to rehab it? <laughs> mostly a lot of cleaning, which we're still doing all the time. In fact, if, uh, you know, we're gonna be doing some power washing this week, so you know, anyone wants to bring their rubber booties on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> Anybody's got their own power washer? <laughs> That's that. right, just bring it, you know, help us out. But, um, no, I mean, we, we definitely had to fix up some stuff. We painted a mural inside. Mm -hmm. um, we just, we added, you know, all kinds of lighting, changed everything to LED lights. And all of this happened over a few years. Like I have pictures from when we opened, oh, yeah. which was April of 2018. And, you know, pictures of how the market looks today and like similar, but it's like so much brighter, mm -hmm. you know, so much uh, just, you know, more, more designed, mm -hmm. I suppose. Uh, and, and there's still a lot that needs to be done. Like we're, we've actually started a capital campaign okay. to um, completely redo the interior and especially to transform. We have these giant truck bays mm -hmm. that the, the trucks used to park in and we can't use them right now because they don't have sprinklers or they don't have safety railing. Right. And <laughs> so we have wonderful designs for those to be like a open air farmer's pavilion that we can close up in the winter. Um, and we, we have all of these renderings. So if anyone wants to see them, definitely stop by the market on Saturdays okay. because we have them all. Are they on, on your boards. website also, the pictures? Um, we do have them on the website, okay. yeah. So you can just go to downtownjoplinalliance.com or downtownjoplin.com. It's a great rather. website. I was oh, checking yeah? it out oh, today. Excellent, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, one of my questions is, so with the, uh, with the capital campaign, what mm -hmm. are your goals there? What are your financial goals? Uh, the overall goal is 2.5 million. Mm -hmm. Um, because we already, you know, the property okay. itself is, is worth almost, you know, $2 million. And That's great. Um, we've put, you know, some money into it. We've added some new glass doors uh, just this summer in order to be able to continue our curbside mm -hmm. uh, pickup process that we'd started in the spring due to COVID. Uh, and, you know, we really need a new roof mm -hmm. on the facility. I mean, we, uh, we joke that, you know, when it rains, we get a nice little indoor water feature uh, <laughs> going in one of the halls. <laughs> um, but it would be better to not have that water feature. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's something that, you know, we definitely want to yeah. want to do. And we've already had uh, several generous donors uh, put money towards the project. Great. Um, the last year we've kind of gotten, you know, a little bit off track with it just due mm -hmm. to the pandemic and, you know, everybody's funds are a little bit tighter. Have you been uh, been able to operate through the pandemic? Absolutely. We actually have not missed a week. Seriously? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's that been... That took some grit to <laughs> make that happen, You know, I'm it sure. wasn't the easiest thing that we ever did, but I'm really proud that we did it. Yeah. So um, back when everything started to get very serious in March, um, we stayed open a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And bear in mind, in Missouri, farmers markets are essential uh, businesses. So we technically right. could have remained open inside for the entire time. But what we noticed was that business like took a sharp, you know, decline mm -hmm. in those weeks. 
you know, our vendors were nervous, our customers were nervous, we were nervous. We wanted, you know, obviously we wanted commerce to happen and we wanted the, you know, the market to continue, but we also needed people to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. That was very important it's to the us. the tension we've been living in for oh, the, right? the whole pandemic. And yeah. So much stress involved yeah. with that. But uh, so we very quickly switched to an all online platform and uh, curbside pickup. We had our vendors were great sports about it, mm -hmm. you know, because we had people who, you know, some of them didn't have that much knowledge of, you know, online sales mm -hmm. and platforms. And they very quickly learned. And so you were able as a customer and you're still able, in fact, our ordering for this week uh, opens at eight o'clock uh, or at eight o'clock uh, on, let's see, this is Sunday. So it'll open on Tuesday at eight o'clock and you can go in and browse all these different vendors and order. And then you just come and you pick it up on Saturday. You drive mm -hmm. through, you don't have to get out of your car if you don't want Somebody to. Somebody walks out to you and Absolutely. says, hey, what do you look, you know, yeah. I'm here to pick up and they'll run it out. Yes, but it was wonderful back in April when we started. We had all of these other vendors who volunteered to pack the bags, you know, to mm -hmm. help distribute them to the customers. And some of them weren't even the vendors who were having the most sales, uh -huh. you They'd know, help on each the other items. out, the vendors help yeah, one another out. Yeah, but they just came and, you know, we, we were all very careful. We wore masks and sanitized and, um, you know, our customers seem to really appreciate it. And I think they still do. Did the vendors bounce back after that lull you, you mentioned? Yeah, I mean, the for the first several months that we did the curbside, the num numbers were actually phenomenal. Um, uh, higher than normal? Yes, higher than normal. That's great. Well, and part of that, if you'll remember, like there were all the runs on grocery stores oh, yeah, and things. Yeah. And also, you know, was there any handcrafted toilet paper for sale? <laughs> we didn't. We thought about it. We were like, hmm, yeah. do you think we could pass these paper towels <laughs> off as handwritten? It? But no. Um, but, but there was, you know, it, it happened to be the time of year when produce was really coming into yeah. season. And we had, um, you know, some of our farmers who had beef and pork yeah. and chicken. Uh, which were in short supply. Yeah. And here it's like, and you also knew like this was coming from, you know, maybe 15 miles away. Like the average. Um, mileage that our produce and meat and whatever travels to get to the market is nine miles. Okay. You know, so I, I think, you know, when there was all of this, you know, kind of wariness about like, well, who's been touching my stuff? You know, yeah. like, like, is this safe? Mm -hmm. Like knowing that it came from, you know, someone who could be your neighbor in some cases yeah. was your neighbor. Yeah. You know, it really, it rang different with people right. um, at that point in time. Well, it filled a niche, a very important niche Absolutely. for folks. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so help the vendors and help people that were in need of stuff yes. To, yes. to make sure and get that stuff. So it's, yeah. it's interesting how everybody has made their adjustments uh, no matter what what field they're in. Now, mm -hmm. is it just food or are there other products too that have been sold? Um, there are other, I mean, at the market itself, we have, you know, lots of different products. We have uh, handmade bath and body. You know, we have okay. people who grow their own lavender and then turn it into products. Mm -hmm. People who do their honey and turn it into bath and body. Plus you can just buy the honey. We have wood products, we have art. Um, online, we also still do offer some things that aren't just food. You know, we have a wonderful local watercolor artist on there. so. Uh, we have a woodcraft artist, so if you're looking for like a special gift and you're someone maybe who it's still not safe for you to go into any facility, even when they're, everyone's fully masked, like our curbside is still a wonderful option for you. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about that in yeah. just a minute right after this Mercy Minute. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Welcome back. Uh, it's good to spend this uh, part of the Sunday morning with you. I'm here with Ivy Hagedorn from Joplin Empire Market, and we're talking a little bit about what the, the market does here in Joplin on Saturday mornings, and also one of the unique programs that they've begun in feeding kids. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about your, your feeding program. Sure. Uh, so we offer free kids meals every Saturday. And this uh, initiative started actually back during the summer when we were getting ready to reopen our market halls. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I think that, you know, one of the unfortunate spotlights that came out because of the pandemic was just on how food insecure, mm -hmm. you know, so many oh, yeah. of our local families yeah. are. Yeah. And um, well, so, especially kids, yeah. that, you know, they rely on school lunches and Absolutely. school breakfasts. And Absolutely. And a lot of our, you know, school districts around here really did work to make sure that kids got fed, mm -hmm. even if they weren't in class. But there's always gaps there, right. you know, and that's why there's so many different private programs to help try to fill those gaps. And so uh, we have one of our market vendors is actually uh, Just a Taste, mm -hmm. and they're a local winery mm -hmm. and restaurant out of Web City. So you can you know come in any Saturday and grab a great bottle of wine or mead. But they also wanted to spearhead this program mm -hmm. where we offered free bagged lunches for kids on Saturdays. Is that because they had seen some kids in needs, heard some stories? Yeah, absolutely. Well. Um, the manager there is actually uh, part of the Web Cities Farmers Market as well, and you know they for years have had some great programs mm -hmm. with feeding local children. Okay, so there was a model for exactly, how to do and this. so she was great. like, "Hey, let's do something, you know, at the Empire Market." And ours is a little bit different right now. Like we do the you know cold bagged lunches. Like you can come in. It's um, usually like a sandwich mm -hmm. or cheese and crackers. There's always some sort of vegetable mm -hmm. uh, and fruit, and then often juice or milk. And sometimes some of our vendors will actually bake cookies and we'll include those in there, you know, as a treat. Are, are all the foods that are, that are in the lunch from local vendors? They're local not bakers? all from local vendors. Okay. It depends on what's in season mm -hmm. sometimes. And, um, you know, what, like a lot of our vendors have, you know, generously donated some things. Um, and that's a pro part of the program that, you know, we're hoping to expand, you know, even more of this coming summer. Um, but, you know, the rest of the year, we, we definitely are, you know, just kind of going to other various places around town, trying to make the dollars stretch as far as right. they can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have, like I said, Just a Taste is the main sponsor, but we've also had a lot of our market patrons sponsor market meals. Uh, there's actually a donation donation tab on our curbside website mm -hmm. where you can go in and it's a $5 donation to sponsor and that'll cover sponsor several several okay yeah that'll that'll cover several different market meals and uh you know anyone who is in need of this kind of market meal they can either go on to our curbside website which is open um tuesdays from 8 p.m to thursdays at 8 p.m okay. and they can request one or several and or they can just come in on a Saturday. We always make, you know, plenty of extra for anyone who just comes in Great. and if they have need of it, then, you know, they can grab one or a few and take them with them. Is there a limit on how many you make every Saturday? Um, I guess there has to be. Right but. now, just with our donations, what they are, we usually max out ab at about 35 to 40. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're, again, we're hoping uh, to expand this program quite mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, this coming spring and summer. Yeah, and, and expanded in numbers or reach? Uh, or? Both. Uh, we're always looking for, you know, to, to reach more people, um, but we'd also like to have a consistent system of where, like, we know that we have the availability of funds and volunteers to make, mm -hmm. you know, 50 to 100 to 200 meals. Like, we don't want to get into a situation where our reach um, you know, is, is more than our capacity right, right now. Uh, we don't want to leave people disappointed. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've kind of, you know, started it off slow and small. And then, you know, we will, we will build it as we also are rolling out our Empire Sprouts program yeah. uh, this spring and summer. Well, tell us about the Empire Sprouts program. Yeah, so I'm very excited about this. Uh, so this is our kids programming. Almost everything involved with it will be free. Um, some things will require registration and a lot of things will be rolling out over time as it's safe to bring people together. Yeah. Um, but this is essentially uh, an education and nutrition and also a fun program for kids. It'll be from, depending on the actual activity involved, it can mm -hmm. be anywhere from preschool, you know, all the way up to junior high age children. There will be a gardening component. We mm -hmm. have some community gardens on site. This will actually be the first part that's rolled out because it will be outside. So there, there is room in around the market. Is it kind of behind it there? Um, it's the actually, yeah, side? it's it's back like where the curbside pickup is okay. in our courtyard right off 3rd Street. And we have uh, all these really nice uh, community garden beds built. 
and we have uh, a That's few wonderful right. volunteers, one of whom is a master gardener. Mm -hmm. And um, you know they're going to be leading kids through some some fun activities, mm -hmm. just in you know how to how to start a garden bed. Um, we're going to be doing some nutritional things. We'll actually be working with um, the KCU Med School oh, that's on great. some Two of great this. Partnership. Yeah. yeah, and there's some fun arts and crafts things like. There's these, I want to do these zucchini racers where you actually take zucchini when they're in season and you put like little wheels on them. And well, I thought you said zucchini erasers. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that might work racers. as well. I don't know if this is going to work. Right. So it might end up working as well. But um, just, just Are the wheels made things. of carrots? Are they? I mean, little run? they might be. They could be, okay. <laughs> they might be. But, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be just fun, like arts and crafts uh -huh. things. Um, Things to also, what we really want to do is educate kids on where their food comes from and what the difference is between the food you can get you know, locally from a farmer that you mm -hmm. actually get to stand there and talk to mm -hmm. and, you know, versus what you can get at the grocery store. Because most kids have no idea. Exactly. Uh, and the connection. Exactly. And I mean, and part of it, it's not about... Most adults <laughs> don't have... <laughs> right. You know, well, and an that's idea. the real thing. It's that like we really need to get this next generation, you know, while they're mm -hmm. young, appreciating this kind of thing because, you know, the amount of farmers in the U.S. goes down every year. Mm -hmm. And especially the ones who are doing um, what are called specialty crops, which are the things you buy at farmers markets, mm -hmm. like tomatoes and peppers and potatoes. Like, that is a hard thing to make a living at. Yeah. It's really tough. Imagine. But, you know, this pandemic especially, it has showed us how important that is. Mm -hmm. Because like when supply lines get disrupted, you really start relying on people who are in your own backyard and who are growing enough, not just for themselves, but for their community. D did you see more and more people stepping into gardening? And I think I've heard that. But I is, mean, definitely have you seen the it? gardening. Um, the, and, I, and I think that's great. And that's one of the reasons like we wanted to do our community gardens too. It's just that I don't know that most people understand the, the step up from gardening to actually making crops producing, for, yeah, yeah. For, for producing at even the level yeah. to do a farm stand um, or a market. And, and so if we can you know, start impressing upon you know, the youth, like uh -huh. how important that is, and I mean, we don't expect them all to grow up to become, you know, farmers. But appreciate. But, but yeah. appreciate it and like understand like, well, yes, this one might cost a little bit more, mm -hmm. but that was also grown by, you know, this guy here that you can actually go and talk to. Yeah. You know, it was all done organically and this is why mm -hmm. that's important. And, and less of a carbon footprint when it's right. just shipped for Absolutely. 15 miles Nine away. Nine miles, yeah, five yeah. miles. It's yeah. like, you know, that is so much better for all of us than you know, the, what we're kind of yeah. used to, you know, as far as the, the mass meat markets mm -hmm. or, um, you know, having veggies shipped in when they're not even ripe, you know, from, from places uh, yeah. far away. Yeah. Um, are there any kind of strange foods that, you know, the market has that you couldn't find anywhere else? Uh, well, let's see. Like you know, rutabagas. Do they have rutabagas? <laughs> there are, you know, rutabagas. I don't even know what a rutabaga we, we, is. <laughs> we've had some people with rutabaga. Um, my favorite is honestly the great variety of peppers uh, that we get peppers. in summer. Yes. Um, that's one of my favorite things just because I like being able to try that. We actually, um, not this past year because of COVID, but the year before we started something called Pepper Fest. Mm -hmm. um, which is in the summer. It's in it August. sounds painful to me. <laughs> there was a hot sauce testing competition, <laughs> but it was also like, it's amazing how mild mm -hmm. some of them are. And, and a lot of our... Right. Um, That's a trap. <laughs> it's mild. Just try See, it. No, it is. It's about the flavor, mm -hmm. not the mm -hmm. heat. <laughs> and, and so you come in and you can try them and you can be like, yeah, yeah. And then you can go and get some horchata if it's mm -hmm. way too <laughs> hot for you. <laughs> Just, you know, wash, wash that taste out. out. But no, I mean, that was one of my favorites. Um, you know, we have a vendor who uh, also will have like turmeric mm -hmm. and uh, spices. ginger. So, yeah. yeah, and we, we have another vendor who does a lot of their own ground spices. And I mean, I'll say it's definitely improved my cooking. Yeah over the last couple of years to be able to buy from them, from Fleetwood Farmette, rather than, you know, like, oh, how old is this jar of cumin in my pantry? Like, <laughs> it doesn't I'm, last forever. No, it's that you're pretty much putting dust on your, uh, <laughs> on your food at that point, you know, buy it fresh. So, so yeah, we, um, 
you know, we have people who are always trying, you know, different things mm -hmm. at the market, which is what I, I really love about it. And, uh, you know, I think it, it's just overall a very creative place yeah. for people to come in. And that's whether you're a grower or you're an artisan or just a customer coming in and being like, oh my gosh, like somebody makes this yeah. here. Well, what great things going on. I mean, the market itself, yeah. the vendors, how many vendors about do you have? It depends. Like uh, last year, we actually, for the year overall, we ended up having almost 60 vendors That's amazing. that we gave space to. Um, this time of year, it's you know, one of our slower times, right. but yeah. uh, you can still usually find about 20 vendors this time of year. And then during the summer and during the holidays, those numbers shoot up quite a bit. So you've got the vendors, you've got the children's feeding program yeah. that you can access online. People mm -hmm. can donate to that if they want to. Uh, you've got the Sprouts, is that what it's called? Yeah, Empire, Empire Sprouts. Sprouts. <laughs> so a lot of things going on. Absolutely. So we'll be right back in just a minute. Uh, with uh, Right after this Mercy Minute, I'll be back with uh, Ivy Hagedorn. So stick with us, go freshen up your coffee, and uh, we'll be back shortly. Hi, I'm Karen Brown. Last year, my sister was diagnosed with ovarian stage 3C cancer in her early 40s. As a mother of two beautiful children, I didn't think twice about undergoing genetic testing here at Mercy. Even though I have grandparents and an uncle battle cancer, seeing a genetic counselor wasn't something that ever crossed my mind until my sister's results showed that she was BRCA2 positive. We've come a long way, especially in about the last five years. Genetic testing can pinpoint the cancers that you are at highest risk for in order to detect them earlier or if possible prevent them. My genetic counselor at Mercy Robin took note of my family health history and answered all of my questions. She even suggested my brother get tested. Robin said if he tested positive he may be more likely to be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and that is what I lost my uncle to. There are uh, many other types of cancer that are also possibly hereditary um, such as colorectal cancers, pancreatic cancers. I honestly was prepared to hear that I was positive but indeed I was negative and what a huge relief that was not only to me but to my family to know I wasn't at a great risk of developing breast or ovarian cancer. Diet, lifestyle choices such as smoking or drinking all contribute to our risk for cancer. Genetic testing is taking just kind of one piece of that. Talk to your primary care doctor or your OBGYN and ask for a referral to a genetic counselor. It's been great spending a little bit of time this Sunday morning with you, and it's been great talking to Ivy Hagedorn from the Joplin Empire Market. Great things going on there. I have to admit, I have not been down there yet, but I am inspired. I'm going to head down there as soon as I possibly can, see what's going on. I can't wait till spring to see what's going on that way. But uh, if you want to connect, uh, hit the website. Just do a little search and hit the website. You can uh, help sponsor the feeding program that's going on down there and get involved in the Sprouts program as well. Great things going on, and uh, it's, again, it's been great to spend a little bit of time with you here on this Super Bowl Sunday. I hope your team wins, and I hope that you'll be back next Sunday here on Faith in Our Hometown. Take care, and God bless. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.